And most importantly, I think you managed to completely revamp shareholders, got major new shareholders in like Eric Sport, funding the company in this latest round. You told me that you were so oversubscribed, it was already be becoming a tough decision to cut people out. Exactly, exactly. Talking silver here today with Guy and Silva Di Pasco. Great to have you here in Zurich. And yes, your project definitely has made some great progress. So we've been invested for about two years now and you started drilling. The drill results came back better than expected. So uh, the business case is on track. 40 holes uh, overall that are being drilled uh, over the coming months and um, things are looking good for Teo Di Pasco right now. Yeah, well, we were so happy. It took us so much time to get that easement. In addition, we published the results of the first hole. And one thing you have to know, it's a 19 meter shallow hole okay and those tailing at some point they are 58 meters deep okay so the older the tailing will be the richer the tailing will be at the bottom because these are tailing from early 90s and the more you go the more you go the poorer on top the tailings will be we drilled that first hole which was on the side 19 meters, which was supposed to be a poor hole because it's, a, it's from the top. And it came out with 52% more silver than what the Brophy report was published in 2012. Oh, I mean, that's uh, great news. And uh, how many holes are we now um, going to see still till the end of 2024? So we're going to have them all. So we've got one published, like we rush it. It's a long process. We have to freeze that core one meter by one meter to avoid oxidation. And when it comes to the lab in Lima, we split the sample. One goes for assay, half of it goes for metallurgy. We'll get them all. We see the deep holes. And at some point, you can see a line, definite line in between the more gray dark material. And then it turned out to be more reddish brown. This is the copper gold silver at the bottom. Okay, so the, the result basically driving the business case that's still pending. Yeah, exact, exact. One thing I would like to note also, we see at the bottom of the hole, we were not supposed to get copper, but we, we get a little bit of copper in the last three samples. But what we also get on one sample is more than 100 ppm gallium. Gallium is $30 US in United States. Okay. So this could add to the in-situ value of a every ton. Today also joining us, we have Sven. Sven's the reason I invested in COD Pasco in the first place two and a half years ago. Sven, you must be pretty excited. Um, I mean, you've been in, in this stock, I think, already four years. So for you, it's been quite an epic wait uh, and great to see the development now. It's been a rough ride to get to get us to this point and if, if we had had that meeting eight eight months ago the company would have looked very different under a lot of pressure but this is how fast things can turn with the right movement you put away the debt that was pending on weighing on the stock 70 million dollars something like yeah, that 72 million negative working capital gone it's like we made yes 72 million dollars so that debt. liability is gone and most importantly i think you managed to completely revamped shareholders, got major new uh, shareholders in like Eric Sport, funding the company in this latest round. Uh, uh, you, you told me that you were so oversubscribed, it was already be becoming a tough decision to cut people out. Exactly, exactly. So you, you, you said it all. We came here last year, 72 million negative capital, capital mm. with the Santander mine, no easement sign, no permit for drilling, looking for money. People start to think we're never going to get that easement. And we're coming back here this year. Eric Sprott is in. No more problem with money. We sold the Santander mine for $1. So we got rid of $72 million worth of debt. We had the easement. We had the permit for drilling. We drilled the first hole and we were very happy with that first hole. I think uh, for people that hear about the story for the first time, it's, it's, also, it's really important to point out how unique the, the type of exploration work is that you're doing. This is not exploration in hard rock in, in, in anything new. This is exploring an aged 100-year-old tailings yeah. uh, pond. So you're drilling in very soft material, which causes problems and challenges. But it's the benefit is you're done with 40 to 60 holes, short holes. So that's, that's, a, re that's a resource in record time. The good thing is we know what's in there. We know because we know what was processed what we did 
at some point in 2020, we want to buy the operation from Vulcan. And we did an intense due diligence. We had two engineers, two geologists on site, and we took the monthly report from 1906 until 1992, when they stopped sending material into that tailings. And we took the monthly report and we compiled. So the good thing is we know precisely the content. Where it is in the tailing, we don't know, but we know that every hole we're sure we're going to get the silver or the copper. And the size of the resource, you know, you, you basically give a first indication in your presentation. It's, it's, it's 450 million ounce silver equivalent. Exactly, yeah. yeah. We got 465 million ounce of silver equivalent, including 110 million ounce of native silver. Would you be able to put that into perspective size-wise? How does it compare with other resources and how is it different as well i think the, the difference obviously is it's open pit and it's already three milled and mined exact exact so it's so uh, i don't know what to tell you as a comparison what what i think and what we think it is the largest above ground mineral resource on the planet just that tailing and why is it so rich we we check over the years in the in the reports and we notice that they were doing the flotation on a period of 24 hours. And they were extracting from that pit every day 20,000 tons. And they were sending for processing 13,000 tons. So when you do the flotation, you recover rapidly 60% after 24 hours. And you can go up to 85, 87% if you keep the flotation going. So why... Should they wait an extra 48 hours to get an extra 25% while every morning they have 20,000 ton of fresh material, fresh material yeah. where they were going to get the 60%. You know, so they were throwing that material away. Yes. So that's why it's the richest and the biggest tailing on the planet. And then the other thing that caught my eye pretty recently is that Your current assumption in terms of metallurgy and recoveries is, it seems to me very modest and moderate, 40% recovery. So we, we see in Peru today, in our model, we, we use 41.5%. But we see, and my colleague Stephen was in Peru this week, and we see more and more they start reprocessing tailings. Mm -hmm. And we see, we've seen two, including the Santander mine. They're recovering 72%. If you use a flotation facility that has been built after 2013, you will get those high recovery. So the 41%, in fact, is when we do a 25 minutes presentation in those conference. If we put 60%, you can lose 10 minutes on people that could argue with you. Mm -hmm. So that's why we put the 41%. But at the end of the day, you still end up with 200 million profit per year at 41%. And, and it's, I think, worth noting that the new metallurgy is being made, done, done currently as we speak by we're, processing we're the core exactly. so, and yeah. probably going to be released in Q1. You got it. Thanks for sharing those uh, insights and updates. Really amazing and uh, respect that you pulled it off with this project. Yeah. I remember seeing you at the PDAC uh, last year and wow, um, your team really has delivered. Uh, thanks to Barfly for hosting us here today, just next to the Park Hyatt. Uh, amazing place, do check it out. And looking forward to 2025 with Cerro de Pasco. Thank you very much.